first questions that people ask is, who runs Bitcoin? And earlier um, I said that there's no central authority. Well, that's absolutely true. There's no one that runs Bitcoin um, from an organizational or administrative perspective. The, the running of Bitcoin takes place through computer programs that are running on many different co people's computers simultaneously. And it is that computer code that's running decentralized nature on different people's computers, talking to each other from many different places, uh, to many different places, that together run Bitcoin. And so while we might be more familiar with the, how the US government runs the US dollar, when we say who's running Bitcoin, uh, the right answer is probably to say that there's computer code running on people's machines that is keeping the Bitcoin system working and operating. All right. The technology behind Bitcoin uh, was introduced in a white paper around 11-1-2008. And what was introduced in this paper was an algorithm. And it's important to keep the distinction that we've talked about already between an algorithm and a program. Uh, keep those ideas separate in your head because the initial introduction of Bitcoin was as an algorithm or an abstract process by which many different computers could work together in order to run a digital currency. It's an algorithm because it was sort of, it was described in a way that was separate from a particular program that um, runs the Bitcoin algorithm. Uh, and so now as a result, we can find many different programs that run the Bitcoin algorithm um, on different uh, computer systems. We might find them on uh, Windows computer systems. We might find Bitcoin clients or Bitcoin programs that run on Macintosh computer systems or that run on mobile platforms. All There's not one program called Bitcoin. There are many programs which run the algorithm, uh, which was first introduced in uh, 2008 uh, by an author whose name was listed on this paper as Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, this, this name is widely believed to be a pseudonym, meaning that um, most people don't believe that there's actually a person named Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, after publishing that initial paper, he eventually disappeared. Uh, and if you do an analysis of the text in this paper, the spelling and the formatting suggests that it's probably a British author, or someone who is trained uh, to speak English or learn English or learned English uh, in a British speaking um, or in, in a place with a British accent or British um, syntax. Other theories about uh, who Satoshi is is that it isn't a single person, but it's actually a collective effort of many different people working together under one name of Satoshi Nakamoto. And then by putting this paper out there, they, they um, uh, quickly wanted to become anonymous for reasons unexplained. Well, the passwords uh, for the initial um, uh, for the initial Bitcoins that were out there, and we'll talk about where passwords come into the system in a second, but the initial passwords that were out there were turned over to a, uh, a man named Gavin Anderson, who's uh, considered to be the lead developer on the reference program or the, or the example program uh, for the Bitcoin algorithm. And, uh, and then and Satoshi disappeared. And there's been some news, news articles recently about uh, journalists who have been trying to um, locate and identify uh, the person who might be the original uh, Satoshi um, author of this paper. So that's where it started. It started with a white paper in 2008 describing the algorithm for Bitcoin. All right. Now, Satoshi is a term that refers to the smallest unit of Bitcoin that can be represented by the system. And so that's approximately uh, one ten thousandth of a cent. Uh, if you were to translate the Bitcoin value into uh, dollars um, at the current rate. Um, and so that's, that is a, um, the smallest number that can be represented uh, in the Bitcoin system uh, for the transfer of value between different, um, between different uh, computer programs. Um, and and additional, additionally, that original client, uh, the computer code that was turned over to Gavin Anderson, is now called the Satoshi Client. And that, the Satoshi client is a specific program. It is a program that has implemented the Bitcoin algorithm. It is one program of many that exist now, but it's considered kind of a standard or a reference or a benchmark uh, that other programs emulate on their own operating systems and in their own programming languages. 
uh, in order for all the clients to work together well. Um, so where can we find this? Well, it turns out that the computer code for this Satoshi client is available online. It is an open source uh, program, which means that the code, like the algorithm, is not owned by anyone. And at any time, people can go and they can look at the code line by line and evaluate whether it's doing what it should be doing. Um, and so here on the screen next to me, this is just a picture uh, of something called Git, which is a code management system. And it shows all the different changes that uh, different developers have made to the client uh, over time. And this is a particular snapshot um, in 2013. And you can see on the right the authors of the code. And you can see that Gavin Anderson is still, is still a major participant. But there are several other people who are contributing code uh, to the Satoshi client. All right? One particular program implementing the Bitcoin algorithm. Code is available for free. Okay. Um, it's open source and you can download it. Uh, you can compile it on your own machine, although this requires some technical expertise in order to be able to get it to compile cleanly. And in fact, you can even modify it. Uh, you can change what it does if you want. However, because of uh, the way that the Bitcoin algorithm works, if you change the code and it doesn't interoperate correctly with the other Bitcoin programs that are running, uh, the other Bitcoin programs will stop communicating with your modified code if it doesn't conform to the Bitcoin algorithm. Um, so here is a screenshot of the Satoshi client, um, at least one version of it um, at, a, at a moment in time. And you can see here that it, it calls itself a wallet. And so this is a wallet program that enables you to uh, have a certain amount of Bitcoin and to send and receive Bitcoin transactions from other people. All right. So unlike the way you might think of US dollars, you think of US dollars when they're in your wallet, you think of you think about it in terms of you holding the dollars. The dollars are in your wallet, you can pull them out. Um, physically, you can verify them. You can establish that you hold, that you have them physically by looking at them. You can see serial numbers. Bitcoin's a little different. Bitcoin exists purely in a digital form. And as a result, it's not something that you can exactly hold. And so the way in which Bitcoin is transferred from one person to another is a little bit unusual. Instead of actually having a certain amount of Bitcoin on your computer in some way, instead what you have on your computer is you have a password. Um, and that password uh, proves that you have rights to a certain amount of Bitcoin. And those rights can be validated by presenting the password and um, having all of the clients in the system check your password to make sure that, yeah, you do in fact have the rights uh, in order to spend a certain amount of Bitcoin. The, the, there's a long record of all of the different holders of Bitcoin that's called the blockchain. Um, and it's like a big accounting book that exists online that's spread among all the different people that are participating in Bitcoin that is like a ledger that keeps track of everyone who has rights to any of the Bitcoin. All right. And so what you can see here on the screen is you can see uh, one pair of cryptographic keys uh, that uh, could be used to, um, uh, to spend Bitcoin, to, to assert your right to a certain amount of Bitcoins by presenting this password. All right. So when you decide that you're going to pay someone in Bitcoin, what you, you don't actually give them uh, the money like you do with a dollar. Instead, what you do is you present your password to the collection of computers that are working together to run the Bitcoin system. That password says that you have rights to a certain amount of Bitcoin. And you say, I want to, you, you, electronically, you say, I want to transfer the rights to a certain amount of Bitcoin from this password, technically, this cryptographic key, to another cryptographic key. You put that message out into the distributed, decentralized community of Bitcoin computers. They check to make sure that your password matches, and then uh, those rights get transferred to the new password. And so as long as that password uh, is secret, with the, that the other person keeps that password secret, they now have the rights to the, to the Bitcoin that you just released um, in the presence and in the wit uh, with the witness of all the other computers that are part of the Bitcoin ecosystem. So he's keeping track of all these rights. Well, Bitcoin's decentralized, and so there's not 
one person that's keeping track of all of these. In fact, everyone's keeping track of all of the rights. Um, when you start your Bitcoin client, when you start the program that's running the Bitcoin algorithm, you immediately join a peer-to-peer -peer network, uh, a network of, of, of computers that are all connecting directly to each other that find each that that in the standard configuration find each other on an internet relay chat channel um, and this can of course be changed through configuration options but in the basis in the basic um, default settings of the satoshi client this is how computers find each other and the first thing that your client has to do when you turn it on for the very first time is you have to go out and you have to ask all the other computers that are in the bitcoin ecosystem to send you the long uh, the long um, accounting book or the long ledger of transactions that have transpired from the beginning of the uh, Bitcoin, um, from the origin of Bitcoin until now. And this complete ledger is called the blockchain. It lists all the transfers of rights that have enabled uh, one person's uh, claim to Bitcoin to be transferred to another person's claim to Bitcoin. All of these um, rights transfers are all recorded in this ledger book um, called the blockchain. Um, all of the computers that participate in this ecosystem all have their own copy of the, uh, of the blockchain and um, can verify the um, validity of all of the transactions that have happened in the blockchain through cryptographic protocols or through a series of specialized passwords.